What is going on, man? This is Patrick James here, and let's talk about the top five reasons why you are not yet charismatic. So let's jump right into it. Reason number one is you talk about yourself too much. And this goes back to Dale Carnegie, old school Dale Carnegie. Everybody's favorite topic is themselves, all right? Everybody loves to talk about themselves because that's the one topic that they truly know the most about in this world and it's the one topic that's fresh on their mind at all times. And if you are constantly talking about yourself all the time, I did this, this happened to me, then you're just being like everybody else. You're blending into the crowd and truly charismatic people are the guys who stick out. They're the guys who people remember instantly when they meet them. All right, it's kind of like a catchy tune. You only have to hear it once or twice to remember it a year from now, all right? That's like a charismatic person. And if you're not yet that, the first reason is because you talk about yourself too much. So I'm not gonna give you old school advice that's been tried and true and you know overplayed and you've probably heard it before of like just be interested in the other person. I'm just gonna give you one uh, practical tip to kind of just shift this around. So. By all means, talk about yourself. Obviously, I love to talk about myself. You love to talk about yourself. Let's all talk about our fucking selves. But if I wanna be charismatic, then all I have to do is at the end of my story that I'm telling about myself, just ask you, just turn it around, ask you, has anything like that ever happened to you? Can you relate to what I just went through? All right, and now I'm bringing your opinion so that you can talk about yourself based on what I just said. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, the reason why you are not yet charismatic is you complain too much. Now, here's the thing, and I'm sure there's a psychological name for this phenomenon, but people are going to associate whatever emotions that they feel when they're around you with you. So if you're always telling sad and depressing stories, and maybe you're like that commercial on TV where it always has the sad puppy dogs and it's saying, adopt a puppy today, and you're always talking about negative things and things that make me feel sad and you know just very emotional, then I'm gonna start associating that in my memory, my brains, the neural connections, are gonna associate the memory of you with being sad, with feeling down on myself. All right. However, if I'm always, if, if you and me are hang, hanging out and I'm always telling you awesome stories, I'm telling you stories about great men in history who are overcoming adver adversity and being fucking awesome and, and becoming the best version of, of themselves and being truly charismatic, then you are going to associate me with those emotions that those stories made you feel. Does that make sense to you? All right. Hopefully that makes sense. So the third reason why you are not yet the most charismatic version of yourself is you're constantly looking to others for approval. Now, let me ask you this because this is fresh on my mind. Donald Trump just won the presidential election. Now, Donald Trump is a very, um, let's, let's just call him controversial, controversial character, all right? He never seeks approval for what he does. And in fact, a lot of people are actually offended by the things that he says and does. But here's one thing that makes him charismatic, and it's actually proven that in an election, the charismatic person, most often than not, more often than not, is the winner of the election. And I would tend to agree with this election. That's exactly what happened. This guy never seeks approval for what he says, what he does, what he thinks. He just is that. He does that, he says that, and he owns it. And people are actually drawn to that. Subconsciously, whether or not they want to admit that they're drawn to that, they are drawn to that. And just the fact that he got elected in a presidential election for the United States of America goes to show that it's a very charismatic trait. So here's the thing, and here's one uh, example that might relate to you more specifically is when you tell a joke and you're in a in a group setting or maybe you're around someone that you're not 100% comfortable with and you kind of actually want them to think highly of you when you tell a joke do you laugh at your own joke before they laugh at your own joke or when you ask them a yes or no question do you say do you want to get dinner and you nod and you answer your own question with your own body language, things like that. Or maybe you say something that's more of an opinion or maybe you like throw a thought out there but then you kind of like let it linger and you're doing one of these and you're like looking for how they're gonna react. Or 
do you say a joke and then just kind of look off into the distance like you already know that people are going to laugh at your joke? Or do you say a thought or do something and not even look to other people for the reaction, right? There's a key difference. It's very subtle and it takes a snap of a finger for people to notice that difference. And if you're not yet the most charismatic version of yourself, that's probably one reason why. So the fourth reason why you are not yet the most charismatic version of yourself is you don't speak with passion. When someone asks you, what do you do for a living? You don't know how to answer it. So you say, um, I, you know, type up reports for the TPS reports for my office and people get, they get lost. They start tuning you out the instant you open your mouth. Or when someone asks you what you do, you say, I actually help an army full of dudes become the most charismatic, confident, and courageous version of yourself. When you say something like that, and you can say it with conviction, and you actually get a little bit more excited for the fact that not only are you talking about yourself, but now you're talking about something that you're actually passionate about. It's something that raises emotion in you, and people can feel that, all right? We have things called mirror neurons that allow us to emulate the feeling that someone else that we're looking at is feeling in our own brain. We can actually empathize with how they feel about what they're going through right at this moment because of those damned mirror neurons. And if you're not speaking with passion, if you're not speaking about things that you actually like to talk about, then people are going to feel that. And if they constantly feel like you don't have passion in your life, you don't do the things that you want to do, you don't talk about the things that you want to talk about, then they're not going to see you as someone who's charismatic. And like we said before, people associate the emotions that they feel when they're around you with you. And because of those mirror neurons, if they can see you speaking and they can feel that you're not very passionate, they're not gonna feel very passionate about the thought of you when they're thinking about you or they have the chance to think about you in the future. All right, start talking about the things that you actually wanna be talking about. If something bores you, change the subject. Or if you don't wanna be talking about something, then don't fucking talk about it in the first place or find a way to reframe something or be sarcastic about something or add some facetiousness into what you talk about so that it makes little boring things a little bit more interesting. And the last reason why you are not yet the most charismatic version of yourself is you are simply boring. Now, I don't actually think you're boring. You might be the most interesting person in the world just checking out one of my videos or you've been watching my videos and investing in my products for a very long time now, in which case you're probably not boring. You're probably pretty damn charismatic. But in the other case, on the off chance, if you are just now watching this video and maybe you're not the most charismatic, confident, and courageous version of yourself or you simply run out of things to say in conversation, I have a wonderful free report that's going to teach you nine conversation boosters that if you like run out of things to say in any conversation or if you feel like any conversation is reaching a dip or a lull you just whip out one of these nine conversation boosters and it's going to instantly boost your charisma in that moment it's going to make the conversation a lot less boring and a lot more interesting and thus making those interesting feelings that the other people feel because of that conversation booster they're going to associate those emotions with you thus raising your cares charisma in as a result. So on that note, if you want to pick up that free report, click that link below this video or in the description around this video, and I will see you in the next video, and I'll see you in that free report. Talk to you soon. Peace.